Welcome back to the podcast. Beloved, this is your brother, Big VJ, checking in. Today's conversation, beloved, we're going to talk about the devil. We're going to talk about the devil. We're going to talk about the works of the devil. And in doing so, we're going to read a couple of documents, right, in this conversation. Um, the first one is going to be an article from Front Page Africa Online, in which it talks about the so called white man, the Mizugu, right? He is a uh, he's a preacher. He is playing preacher. He's a true to life pastor, pork chop, and he he's from the states, and he went overseas to Liberia to do the work of his Lord, right? In doing so, um, some things happened. They transpired. It all took place and we're going to talk about it because the headline reads that American missionary in Liberia faces charges of criminal attempt to commit murder and aggravated assault. Placed in his detention, he's awaiting trial and this all is in relation to his wife, black African wife that he obtained when he was in West Africa, a.k.a. Liberia. And we're going to talk about that. But before we do that, let's do this. Um, You know, we really don't have to be smart. Black folks, we just talk to one to another. Brown folks, listen in. You're the firstborn. And we just having a conversation, right? You know, beloved, we really don't have to be the smartest people in the world. I always say on this podcast, all we have to do is listen to the words of our ancestors who are no longer here. They left the literature, they left the oral tradition, and then we double down on that by listening to the elders that are already here. They lived it. They up in age. They seen it, right? So if you're in your 20s, early teens, maybe you're a little older, right? You're in your 30s. You're fresh on this planet. An elder that got you by 30, 40 years has a wealth of knowledge by living on this planet, especially when it comes to race relations that you don't got. Because you're just like your baby on the planet. So you take the words of the elders and then the elders got the words of the ancestors that's older than them. So you can pull from somebody from the 1930s by just reading what they wrote when it comes to race relations, right? In my estimate now, it's just me. We have, as black Americans, something a little bit far past that other folks kind of got. We have Marcus Garvey. We got Noble Drew Ali. We got our brother CM Bay. We don't want to leave CM Bay out, right? Peace be upon them. All these men are no longer here, right? Their ancestors. We have the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So many others, right? brother Dr. Khaled Adu Muhammad uh, we got our brother Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. the list go on and on Dr. Carter uh, Dr. Carter G. Woodson we can just keep going bang 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 and we look at what they say based on race relations right on this podcast we use sources and references and quotes from the Nation of Islam all the time do you know why we do that <laughs> we do that because we talk about our people and the one that stood on the podium on the rostrum on the pulpit on the platform and said my words is for black people was the nation of Islam no other group ever jumped up and said we only talking to these folks and these folks only but them everybody else that kind of get in the religious world they play a different game they play we are the world it's all different colors. You know, it's, they play something different. But the nation, they don't play it like that. So if I'm talking to black people and I have a platform named Real Black Contents for a Podcast, it only kind of like makes more sense that I use references from people that only spoke to black folks as well. This is just how my mind works, right? 
There's a book called The Message to the Black Man. Mr. Muhammad, he's the author of that book. And then there's a page in that book. And I can call it off by memory. It's no problem. Like page 104. <laughs> Look, there's a part in the book. I always say in page 104, um, there's a line that says, they are learning fast. We're talking about us. They are learning fast today that these are the children of those who made merchandise out of their fathers. That's us. We're figuring out that the people that we thought was our friend and we thought was godly and we thought was righteous and we thought was upright, we learned later that they wasn't. We didn't have to figure it out for ourselves. Somebody wrote it in a book almost 100 years ago. We can just pick it up and read it now. We don't have to try to make our own path through race relations, right? Um, so it is what it is. After that, st- after that uh, sentence, pardon me, the sentence that follows that is the devil is the devil regardless of place and time. Mm. Now that's the dagger. You know why that's the dagger? Because when we were younger, right, and we were growing up, we thought that these old racist devils will someday die out, right? They're getting old. They're going to go out. They're going to die out. And there's going to be a new crop of them and they're going to be different. But beloved, we have an ancestor that says that it's not going to work that way. We have an ancestor named Mr. Muhammad that said, well, the devil is a devil regardless of place and time. Meaning, no matter where you put him on the planet, right? You can put him in Australia. You can put him in East Africa, West Africa, South Africa. You're going to have a problem with him. The Menzugu, you're going to have a problem with the Menzugu. You put him in South America, you put him in Central, you put him in North. You put him in Europe, where he's based out of coming right out of the caves. The knuckle dragon himself. It's a problem then. You live amongst them, it's not gonna be right. He doesn't like to be in the Arab world, but he's everywhere he go, it's like the same old hustle. The devil is the devil, regardless of place and time. So we established the place already. So look at the time that we've been dealing with this guy in our relationship. Let's go back 100 years. What was our relationship like? Let's go back 100 years before that. That's 200 years. What is the relationship like? Let's go back 500 years. You'll see, no, what, no matter what the calendar says, when you're around him, he acts the same. He doesn't change. He's like the same kind of guy. You know, wherever you go, he's like the same kind of guy. He had the same nature. You see that captivity follows him. Disproportion follows him. You see that corruption, it follows him. Do we want it this way? It's not what we want, it's just what it is. So, like if we come to America and uh, we take a look at some things that's been going on here, and if we just took a, a quick snapshot at the shootings, like race related with the devil, with our people, I think Gregory Bush is like the oldest one I can think of. He's 53 years old, he had that situation in Louisville. You know, we're talking about those folks assaulting on people. Outside of that, he's like the oldest. You start thinking about Dylan Roof in Carolina. You start thinking about the Buffalo shooter. It's just Peyton Gendron, right? You think about Patrick Wood Chris's. This is the guy in Texas who shut up our Brown brothers. You think about Robert Aaron Long in Atlanta. He shut up our Yellow brothers and sisters. So you have to just think these guys are not old. It should be shocking to you to see that these shooters, they're not they're not old fogies. They don't have the old way. They don't have the they're like the hipster kind of college looking kind of. But when they fall into a certain space and they get in a certain atmosphere, they know to turn the gun on you. The brown man. Yellow man. They know that they don't think that they know that. This guy is who he is. No matter what place and time you put him in, he's who he is. We're going to read an article today. This is recent. And again, this is about, this is a devil. His name is, uh, his name is Lucas. And he played pastor. And he played missionary. And he went to Africa, West Africa, Liberia, which is really our people. 
that's our territory. It belonged to us. We're talking about as black Americans. And we'll go through that as a whole different story for a different day. But I just want to read an article and we're going to have a conversation about what is what. But I'm just saying all that to say this. You know, with the Internet, right? I'm pretty sure the world over, everybody didn't seen and heard about anything that's in connection to religion. You see what I'm saying? It's just. I think it's interesting that black folks in Africa, the motherland, right? It's like a savior kind of like complex. And I couldn't put a finger on any African ancestor to say, man, y'all should have been reading this. You should have known better. When this guy come around, you should have known. Because we got writers in America. We got we got Elijah. We got him. You know what I'm saying? We got Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad. We got the brother minister still sitting tall in Chicago. We got our brother. He's an ancestor. He's no longer here. We're talking about our brother Jabril Muhammad. We got a lot of brothers that told us how this thing gonna work. We, we ain't got to be slow to nothing. We, got, we we don't have to figure nothing out. We can just read and say, no, the people that came before us said that you are these type of people and we are to be weary of you and our salvation is in our separation. Not our togetherness. In our separateness. This is our salvation. Right? Let's take a look at the article. 32-year-old Lucas Richards, an American national, has been arrested and charged with the heinous crime of attempted murder and aggravated assault after allegedly attempting to harm Jessica Lloyd, who was believed to be his girlfriend. He actually married the girl. But we'll continue with that, right? Because this is, this is a very interesting thing that, that transpired over in West Africa. Let's go down just a little bit. Uh, according to information contained in the police charge sheet, the investigation uncovered a complicated relationship between the defendant, Lucas Richards, and victim, Jessica Lloyd. Jessica Lloyd is an original woman. She was the one that was stabbed and cut all in the neck by Slick Rich, right? The two individuals apparently been involved in a romantic relationship that began at the YWAM Bible Mission where Lloyd was a student and later extended to a more personal level even involving Lloyd's personal diary. During the course of their relationship, Lloyd informed Richards that she was pregnant and with child. However, on September the 14th, Richards allegedly administered medication to terminate the pregnancy. We're going to talk about that. He then went to the home of Lloyd's parents and informed them that he would be taking her out to console her. However, his true intentions appear to be uh, to have been quite different. So let me tell you what the intentions was. Pass the poor child Richards. He's a whole devil. He's in the motherland. He's doing some missionary work. He's doing some evangelism, right? Now, all right, let's stop and talk about some. <laughs> let's talk about the missionary work first, right? Where have we seen or heard that in history? Where have we seen and heard that in history? Now, if we just talk about like the last a hundred years, beloved, don't you know how many so-called missionaries that left Europe went into Africa and have rape charges, molestation charges? Assault charges, burglary, kidnapping, the whole nine. It's unreal. They just caught some devils not too long ago. I think it was in the Caribbean trying to steal children. Like, you can't make this kind of stuff up. You know, they're known for doing this. But they come and they play like they're your friend. They smile, they laugh, they joke. And we just can't fathom. Our people are such gullible people, right? So... Or I should say it the way our Hebrew Israelite brother said. We such like a, a sheep moving people. Like easily to be led around. Like just kind of easy going out. Really paying attention. So you know. We get all caught up in all kind of things with these people. Well. He went over there. We talking about Pastor Porchot Richards. And he's a whole devil. And he got up with one of the locals. That is our little sister. Sister Jessica. Some hanky panky went on. How that happens, I 
don't know. How are you there posing as a religious leader and you're doing some teaching and you all in the water doing baptism and all this and all that and you just laying the hands on the folks and you you scouted you one out in the process and you got with the young sister you freaking but you was already married you from the states you got a whole wife already now this is something that those locals in Africa they don't know these is the it's the stuff that those locals in Liberia they don't know now I'm gonna stop and then I'm gonna say this um as a man that was raised in the church house I have an appreciation for what they do in Muhammad's mosque I really do now I ain't never been so I ain't never been to no mosque before and when I say mosque I'm talking about where the Arabs at you know what I'm saying they got the shoes off everybody you know all that I ain't been to no mosque before but I've been to Muhammad's temple now I've been to Muhammad's mosque like <laughs> I've been where our people is at you know what I'm saying <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah I've been to Muhammad's miles I have to make that very very clear I've been there there's like a couple of things that they do that I like and I wouldn't mind black American churches implementing some of these things until their day to day or their week to week the first thing they do that I like is that when you go into the Muhammad's mosque you get searched you just it ain't no just walking in beloved. you just walk in just have a seat and just kick it like and you got the strap all on you. <laughs> Don't work like that, bro. They search you before you go in there. That's uh, that's the first thing I like. That would have killed the Dylan Roof thing. Because Dylan Roof came in to the church house with our people in the Carolina. See, there ain't no searching in there. He just walked in. He had a pistol. They didn't have one. And then it went the way it went. So, you know, I feel like because our people lost their lives in that way, that's a lesson for us. We have to learn from these kind of things. But we have such a short memory. You know, we're talking about our people, right? We have such a short memory that is it's unreal. So, again, going back to the points I like, that's one thing. The second thing I like is that the men and women don't sit together. The men sit on one side. The sisters sit on another side. I like that. That's point two. Point three I like is that the way that you have to date in Muhammad's mosque it is not like the church house. Because I was like, I'm raised in the church, man. My whole family, this is what it is with us. If I like Sister Jackson and I go to, uh, I don't know, let's say Peter's Baptist Church or uh, JoJo's Methodist Church over the rock side, you know, whatever the name, whatever, you know what I'm saying? On the, rock, on the <laughs> front of the rock side, on the back of Jericho. If I went to this church, right, it's Protestant, it's a Methodist, it's whatever. And I got my eye on Sister Johnson, right? Because she got that nice dress on. It kind of fitting. And, you know, you checking her out. Because, you know, we all sit together in the church house. Ain't no splitting. Ain't no women on the one side, men on the one side. I'm peeking over when she clapping. I'm looking. I said, hmm, that thing's sitting right, right? I catch her after service. And I say a couple of words to her. I give her my number. And then we just catch up. And then it'll play like it'll play. Well, you know, when you go to Muhammad's temple, it, it don't work like that. Because now it's a whole different setup. First of all, we're on two different sides of the aisle. So if I'm just turning my neck all through the service, through the lecture, it's going to stand out. What is this brother doing? What, uh, look, the guy on the rostrum, he up here. The minister up here. <laughs> the minister sit up, he's up here. Why are you looking all over there, brother? The word is coming up up here. So that's number one. Number two, let's say I do peep a sister out. And I want to talk to her. We have Muhammad's minds now. I can't just walk up to the sister and approach her and say, hey, how you doing? My name is VJ. Blase, blase. No, it don't work that way. Men and brothers to throw you out of there if you think you're going to do that. What you have to do is uh, I have to go to the brother captain first. And I have to ask the brother captain, hey, man, I think I'm interested in sister Muhammad. I think she's cool, blah, 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 blah. So once I tell brother captain that, brother captain go to the sister captain. And he says, hey, V is interested in such and such. You know, is she interested? Then the sister captain will go to the sister, right? I'm looking at Sister Muhammad, right? I'm gonna use a name. I'm gonna say Sister Jessica Muhammad because I was uh, I thought it's the sister name, Sister Jessica Muhammad. I thought she was cool, right? All right. 
Sister Jessica Muhammad, she take a look at me. She say, yeah, it, we all for it. Now we are able to talk to one another. When we talk to one another, we want to see each other, right? In order for us to see each other, I have to notify the captain again. Hey, man, me and Sister Jessica Muhammad, we finna hang out. All right, well, cool. Every time we hang out and we see each other, he's there. <laughs> I can't meet on my own. I can't just say hey, I'm finna get off work. I'm gonna swing by your house and it don't work like that in the nation. It does not. <laughs> Listen to me. It don't work that way. They got that locked. Look, they got. <laughs> Listen to me. They got that locked up over there, brother. It don't work like that over there. Every time you contact her, you see her, that captain gonna know. So it be such a thing that brothers be like that if your intentions ain't right, you say, man, I'm finna go on by my bed. I ain't finna do all that. It just sound like a so you take your games, unfortunately, back to the church house. Right? Cause you don't, you know, you for play. This is how come this devil was able to lead the states, play pastor, right? Play some type of a uh, youth pastor, this and that, and while he playing all of that, he got next to a young sister, and the people didn't because they don't have that kind of protocol over there. It's not, it don't work that way. So now the sister's knocked up, right? We talk about the sister in this conversation, Sister Jessica Lloyd. All right, Sister Jessica Lloyd get knocked up. Her family find out. They like, yo, you know, we not really with no single parent stuff. She belong to this tribe. These people, we like, we need to marry y'all up. So the devil folded. We talk about Pastor Richardson. He said, "I." Right, he goes along with it. They have the wedding. They had a ceremony. All right. Now I'm going to show you what real, what real. Part of me. I'm going to show you what real wickedness and evil looks like. He agreed. They got the whole ceremony. Keep in mind, Pastor Pochard Riches got a wife already. He has. He's married already. Nobody knows this stuff. So we'll continue. He goes to the ceremony. They're marrying. And now as a young lady, she's not familiar with, you know, the kind of aches and pains that you have during the pregnancy. So her new husband, Pastor Porchard Richards, put together a concoction in a needle and he gave it to her. This is his newfound West African wife. And that concoction that he put in the needle it terminated the pregnancy. Now let's stop there. You see what you're dealing with now? Beloved, I'm going to tell you some game that I ain't make up myself. Regardless of place and time, all this guy know how to be is a devil. He don't know how to be nothing else. Which makes it worse in this situation is he's coming underneath the aid or the image like he's righteous. Now your guard is down. You think, oh, he's, you know, he got the, the good book. He walk around with the good book. He know this and all that. He baptizing folk all in the tribe, all in West Africa. You think he's all right. He's not all right. Regardless of place and time. So this is just me, my personal opinion. I'm not trying to push nothing on nobody, but this is how my mind works. And this is how I think. Beloved, you couldn't put me up in no spot. And I got folks in the building I'm attending to. I'm talking about the church house. And he's in there. Because I'll be curious, well, why are you in here? You know, like, unless you're snitching to us about what your family plan to do, or how your family feel about my people, how just you sitting in here neck and neck and we clapping hands together and singing the songs together, I'm like, I just don't look, I don't look at them people like that. Maybe it's just something I, a level that I have to grow to. I just don't look at them like that. I'm like, I'll be so suspicious of them. Like, man, bro, that's just me. Because I know the history of your folks. It don't work well with my people. It, it never works. It just. It's just what it is. He gives this injection though. To his newfound West African wife. She loses the baby. Now he could be. Hands washed. Everything is clear. Jumped on the plane. Went back to America. Could have been fine. Well let's just back up a little bit. He could have just jumped on the plane. And went back in America. And just said hey I'm gonna wash my hands of all of this he just didn't do it you know what he did he gave it an injection but you know it didn't stop there beloved 
Now, he took it a step further and um, he tried to kill her. He put in the car. They're riding around West Africa. They're riding around Liberia. He act like he's on his way to the supermarket. Before he go to the supermarket, he's telling his uh, wife, young sister Jessica, he tells her like, yo, uh, he's going to take her out to eat because she, he want to console her. She just lost a child. And then while he's telling her that, she's driving past restaurants that she know that's in a local area that they would normally go to that they're not going to. Right. So she's peeping game. So then she's like, yo, um, what's going on? So he pulls over. He's playing like something is going on with the tire. And while she's down assisting him, he got the tire rod in his hand, beloved. He finna crack her in the head. He cracks her in the head. While she goes down, he have a knife. And he attempts to cut her throat and the reports say decapitate her. But um, there were some local African brothers and sisters there. There were some brothers that peeped everything. They thought everything looked at odd. It looked everything looked out of place because the way he was driving. So they was watching him. Cause you know, you see somebody just driving around, and then you can tell when somebody's not really going nowhere and they kind of stand out. So one of the brothers on the motorcycle, he watching. He see this Manzugu, which is a wanderer. That's what they call the devil. He's a wanderer. He's a Manzugu. He just hanging around. He look out of place, right? They see him attacking the sister and they intervene. He jumps back in the car. He tries to pull off. They run him down and they get that car stopped and they get the devil out of the car. And now we're having a conversation about it today. Now, you heard the story of what happened from your brother, right? You heard the story about what happened from Africa Media, right? And if you just kind of like research the name, you will see, just you look up Lucas Richard, you will see that this other publications telling the exact same story that I'm giving you guys, right? Creekside Church had a post that they put up. And in their post, it said, please pray for Creekside supported missionaries, Lucas and Lois Richard. Lucas was attacked and robbed in Liberia today. His phone and money were stolen and their vehicle damaged. We'll add more details as we learn them. Thank you. All right, let's stop. How did you get that out of what I just read? We're talking about this is what they're saying back home. This is back in the States. You know, uh, the devil get caught. He goes to jail. And the post is put up. Please pray for Creek South supported missionary Lucas and Lois Richard. Right? They were Lucas was attacked. He went over to Africa. He was gonna get a good gospel. Right? He was preaching hard. He was delivering souls. He was baptism. He was making miracles. And guess what? They attacked and robbed him in Liberia. His money and phone was stolen in his vehicle damage. How did you get that out of that? Now, you know what put all that to a stop? Because I've heard it's been a retraction since then. You know what put all that to a halt? The internet. Now, let's just be real. If this happened back in 1950, 1960, 1970, 1980, there is no internet. You think they could retract that statement? And came on and said, hey, we made a big mistake. We got some new word and this was going. No. They'd have ran it all on television and you would have never known. That. You would have never known this happened. They'd have put it in the newspaper and that's it. And you'd have said, damn, they, look, man, see, the devil went over there to help our African brothers out, man, and they savage. They jumped on them and they. But we know different. You know, we know that's different. Beloved, we know, we know the truth. Right? Okay, this is a better look at Lucas because that other picture wasn't serving, but this is serving, okay? Because now I'm in their business. So it looked like Lucas and his wife been at this since 2018, going to Liberia, rendering their services. So how many other girls have Lucas been doing this to? Because Lucas, 
You look like a busy man. You been going to Africa since 2017, 2018. I want to, to tell you why we are here. We are here, of course, because we want to help you with your medical problems. We recognize that this is the problem that can hammer people, in the, uh, especially in the rural area, too much. The lack of medicine, the lack of medical care, etc. I don't know how much more that our people need to see, beloved. To what do we? What I mean? What? What more we need to see? There is a lot of events, beloved. I see them often, man. Especially on Twitter about some French guy. He's going to jail. Some British guy. He's going to jail. You know, some German guy. He's the. He's a missionary. They all play the missionary game. Don't you know that was that missionary game that got you on the boat? That's what they do to soften up the people. They go send the missionaries first. And like the missionaries from Europe, they act like as they spies, really. They go see what's going on in the land. They see what the warriors look like and what the common folk look like. And then next thing you know, that real barbaric devil, he comes in and then he just kind of like, he takes it from there. So, yeah, beloved. This is a conversation that we had to talk about, man. I thought this is something. It's not going to get no real major media news. It, it's just not going to happen. Now, um, if it was uh, Pookie and them from Philadelphia, right? And it was uh, Shamika and them from Baltimore. And they went overseas and they was twerking. They got to the slave castle. They twerked. That story will be all on, all on Twitter, all on Facebook. It'll be all over the place. You notice when they do something, how quiet it get? You don't even know the name of the Buffalo shooter. We just say Buffalo shooter, like, yeah, yeah, what's his name? You don't know. You see how they just kind of ease stories in, ease stories out? You don't really know when they're doing something. Oh, everybody knows when you're doing it. Everybody knows when you're doing it. But when they do it, you don't really know. We're going to leave it there, beloved. We're going to leave it there. Because, <laughs> man, we already been taught. No matter what time and place, he is him. You know what I'm saying? The <laughs> is him. Like, hey, I'm not looking for no devil under the ground. No, no. Charlie's, Charlie's here. <laughs> He's not under the ground. Lucas is here. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what kind of rap he got and what he... What he's saying and he just nah man I ain't finna hold no hands no <laughs> no I got relationships with folks in the neighborhood we got to build our own relationship I ain't got time to skip outside the household and try to make some work with somebody else it's not happening I don't know how man I be looking at our people man how y'all feel comfortable around them folk like that I don't be comfortable around like that uh, you know it's just you know I don't know beloved I just I don't know so, because I don't know, I don't make it hard on myself. All we have to do is take the words of our ancestors and our elders. And, beloved, we'll be fine. We will be just fine. Peace of black power to your family. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys for hanging out. Beloved, this is indeed Real Black Contents Forum Podcast. This is your brother VJ, man. I'm going to get it with you guys later. Peace.